Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air dates July 26th, 1952, and the title is Gentleman's Disagreement. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. Dark City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Good morning, Chester. Matt, I've got to talk to you. Sure. Uh, Chester? Uh, You folks will have to excuse me. I I can't be puttering around the office all day. I'll be in the back if you want me. Yeah? Matt, he's here in Dodge City. I just saw him. He came in on the morning train. You mean Ed Beaudry? Yes. It's been four years, Matt. I'd begun to hope he'd forget. Hope he wouldn't find us. From what you've told me, Beaudry doesn't sound like a man who ever forgets. He's come here looking for Bert. To kill him, he swore he would. Matt, what are we going to do? I don't know. What's Bert think about it? He doesn't know yet. He's busy at the blacksmith shop. Matt, you've got to help us. You're the only real friend we have out here. It might make it easier if I weren't, Janie. I'm supposed to maintain law and order in Dodge. That's my job. Doesn't leave much leeway to mix in on personal quarrels. Well, there's no quarrel. It's just that Ed Beaudry's a hot-tempered fool. Bert never did anything to him. He married you, didn't he? A woman has a right to change her mind, Matt. Maybe Beaudry doesn't think so. Matt, you... You promised me once in Louisville... Yeah. Yeah, I know. All right, Jeannie, go on home and... uh... Don't say anything to Bert. I'll talk to Beaudry. Thank you. I'll never forget it. I... Goodbye, man. Chester. Yes, sir, I'll, I'll be right there, Mr. Dillon. Did Ms. Wells leave? Yeah. Fine couple of Wellses. Did you know them before they came out west? Uh, Not Bert. I do, Mrs. Wells. I guess we better drop over to the Texas Trail, Chester. There's a fellow in town planning to do some killing. Matt! It's been a long time. Are you kidding? Hello, Chester. Miss Kitty? Uh, come sit down, Matt. Tell me about things. I can't right now, Kitty. We're looking for a fellow. Thought he might have come in here. Sooner or later, they all do. Stranger, Matt? Uh, yeah. He came in on the morning train. His name's Ed Beaudry. Oh, him? There. The bar, Matt. Third from the end, next to Tulsa Jim Nixon. He's buying Irish whiskey for everybody. Thank you, Kitty. Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. Watch yourself, Max. Yeah, sure, Kitty. I'll see you later. All right, bartender. Set up another round of Jamesons for the house. <laughs> Your name, Beaudry? Well, that's right, mister. Matt Dillon. I'm a U.S. Marshal here. I'd like to talk to you. Fine. Go ahead and talk. Uh, Tulsa, suppose you'll move on down the bar for a couple of minutes, huh? 
Oh, well, now, God. dear Marshal, this man's a friend of mine. Now, you're not very particular about your friends. Now, go on, Tulsa. Drift. Mr. Beaudry, you, uh, you came here to kill Bert Wells, didn't you? Did I? Well, here's some advice. Don't do it. Take the next train and get out of town. Is that official? Just what's the charge, Marshal? None. Yet. Murder, if you go through it. Oh, not the way I understand it. Murder's one thing. Calling a man in a fair fight, that's another thing. Baudry, I'm the law here in Dodge, and I don't see it as a fair fight. Bert's a blacksmith, and he's not used to handling a gun. You are. Or so I'm told. Who told you, Marshal? I don't know anybody here. And... Wait a minute. Dylan? Yeah. I heard Jeannie mention you. You knew her back in Louisville before she ran off. We'll with leave her out of this, Pudry. So that's it. This isn't official. You're just doing a personal favor for an old friend. Probably a very close friend. Jeannie always did have a weak. I warned you once. <laughs> All right, hold it. Now get up, Baudry. That was a mistake, Dylan. Now I'll have to kill you, too. I'm not a blacksmith, Baudry. I'll look you up just as soon as I've finished with Bert Wells. If you kill Bert, you won't have to look me up. Bert? A uh, Bert? Huh? Oh, Matt. I didn't see you come in. Uh, I wanted to talk to you, Bert. About what, Matt? Ed Beaudry's in town. Beaudry? Well, it was bound to happen sometime. Has he been bothering Jeannie? No, she just happened to see him get off the train this morning. She came and told me. She shouldn't have done it, Matt. It's not your problem. Maybe it is, Bert. I'm the law in Dodge, and the law doesn't like the idea of personal grudges ended up in the killing. What do you aim to do? Yeah, prevent it if I can. Well, I wish you luck. You haven't worn that gun for two years, Bert. Why start now? I've got no choice, Matt. You know that. You mean you got no chance. Now, if you let Baudry call a showdown, he'll kill you. Maybe. Look, Bert, why don't you take to the prairie, hold up for a week or so while I figure some way of running Baudry out of town, huh? Would you do it, Matt? Hide out and let somebody else do your fighting for you? Well, what I'd That's do is... That's beside the point, Bert. Jeannie. There's a law against killing. It's Matt's job to enforce it. If you went away, there wouldn't be any fight. Wouldn't be much honor either, Jeannie. Man can't run and still call himself a man. He can run from a mad dog. And that's what Ed Beaudry is. He never had any claim on me. It appears he thought he did. Matt, you know where Beaudry stand? I talked to him in the Texas Trail. He probably took one of the rooms upstairs. Like to walk over there with me? Well, if that's the way you want it. No, Bert, you... you... I'll get my hat. Be right with you. Matt, you've got to stop it. Yeah? How? I don't know. But there must be something you can do. Yeah, there is. Boy, it's shaping up. I can probably arrest the survivor. There's still time to turn back, Bert. I'm afraid not, Matt. I should have had it out with Baudry back there in Kentucky five years ago. Jeannie wanted to run away and avoid trouble, and she was so beautiful it was hard to argue with her. Yeah, I know. Be hard on her if anything happened to you. Life's always hard on a woman, I guess. Worse out here on the prairie. 
Look out for her, Matt, in case I... Well, I mean, if anything... Mr. Dillon? Huh? Oh, what is it, Chester? Boat we left the saloon a little while ago. Went over to the livery stable to hire a horse. Huh? I think he's riding out to your place, Mr. Wells. He's been doing a lot of talking. Jeannie will be there alone, Matt. I better get back home. It won't be necessary. Here comes Baudry now. I won't draw unless he does, Matt. Heads up, Chester. Yes, sir. Oh, boy. Oh. Just riding out to call on you, Wells. I decided you'd had plenty of time to look me up. No reason to, Baudry. Most men had figured they had reason. Somebody been in a local saloon, telling their wife's history. What? Baudry, you... All right, hold it. Don't draw, Bert. Chester, cover Baudry. Just keep your hands still, Mr. Baudry. You're fast with that gun, Dylan. Fast enough, Mr. Baudry. You make Baudry. a good bodyguard. Too bad you can't ride her 24 hours a day. I told you what to expect if you keep pushing this thing, Mr. Baudry. Now use some sense and get out of town while you're still alive. I've been in lots of towns, Dylan. I left them all alive. Wells, I've been planning to kill you for five years. Plans don't always work out. Listen, Will. You got till sundown. After that, I'm going to shoot you on sight. All right, Mr. Baudry, if you've finished speaking your piece, move along. Why, surely, Mr. Dillon. See you later. Well, still a couple of hours before sundown. I think I'd like to spend them with Jeannie. I'll see you, Matt. Yeah, sure. Goodbye, Bert. I declare, I, I just can't see any way of stopping it, Mr. Dillon. I can't either. I'd sure hate to be in Bert Wells' shoes. I'd hate worse to be in Baudry's. He'll never submit to arrest. Chester, I'm going to have to kill him. Why don't you relax, Matt? You're nervous as a cat. Yeah, and I'll stay nervous, Kitty, until I find out what's happened to those two. Baudry slipped out the back way just at dusk. Piano player saw him. Yeah. Now, Bert pulled the same trick. I had a couple of boys watching the blacksmith shop, but he managed to give them a slip. There's nothing you can do now, Matt. Well. Yeah. Another killing. And you in the middle again. Why, Matt? Why do you do it? It's a job, Kitty. Somebody's got to do it. But why you? There are other things in life if you look around for them. Well, maybe I will someday. Will you look my way, Matt? Well, Matt, I... I brought my kit. I'm all prepared. Ah, uh, where are the victims? No victims yet, Doc. You're jumping the gun. Well, I understand it's going to be a real showdown. The boys at the bar are offering two to one on Baudry. That's about the odds, I figure, if the shooting really starts. Oh, oh it'll start all right. Oh, and there's not a thing in the world can stop it. Dill? Chester, what are you doing in here? I told you to watch that street. Yes, sir, I know you did. The fight's there... as likely to start out there as any place else. No, sir, Mr. Dillon. I guess there's not going to be any fight. What? They just found Baudry lying in an alley down the block. Matt. Somebody sneaked up behind him with a hammer. He's sure dead. <laughs> We'll return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, what is the connection between the statue in the square and a pair of thugs who are definitely not on the square with the law? Tonight on Gangbusters, hear the complete details of this exciting case taken from actual police files. Remember, it's Gangbusters later tonight on most of these same CBS radio stations. Don't miss it. 
Now, the second act of Gunsmoke. Showing around the house, Mr. Dillon. No. Not a shop either. He might have skipped out. Well, what about his wife, though? I don't know, Chester. I can't figure any of this. It's not like Bert to pull a sneaking trick like that. Hold it. Don't move. He's there by the tree, Chester. Yes, sir. Bert. Who is it? Who's that? Matt. Chester's with me. You better put away the gun. All right, Matt. I thought it was somebody else. Who, Bert? Well, you, you know who. Baudry, of course. Guess I better take your gun. Official, Matt? Official. Well, I got no quarrel of the law. <laughs> Here. Thank you. Now, why did you do it? What do you mean? If it had been a gunfight, the law couldn't have touched you. Now, the circumstances are all in your favor. But this way, they'll call it murder. And they'll be right, because that's what it was. Matt, what are you talking it's about? It's no use. You left the hammer lying right beside his body. It's got your shop brand carved in the handle. Of Whose body are you talking about? You mean Baudry? Yeah, sure, Baudry. Matt, you're making a mistake. I went looking for Baudry, yes, but I didn't find him. Then I come back here. I was afraid to leave Jeannie there in the house alone. I, I didn't do it, Matt. You're wrong. It's not up to me, Bert. It's the court's job. All I can do is take you in. The evidence is too strong and I got no choice. No choice? I didn't have a choice either. We must have had a choice somewhere back down the line. When? Where was it we could have stopped and turned back? I'm a marshal, not a philosopher. Now, let's go. What about Jeannie? i got to tell her. Chester will take care of it. It'd be better if you'd do it, Matt. You're a friend. That'd make it easy. I'd rather not if you don't mind. Now, come on, let's go. Step inside. Four years we've been friends, Matt. I never thought it would come to this. Neither did I. You said you didn't find any money on him. It could have been robbery. I made to look like robbery. But either way, there's nothing I can do. Now, you better step inside. I'll, uh... I'll bring you some blankets and tobacco. If you want anything else, let me know. Wish I knew how Jeannie was taking it. She'll be all right. She's a fine girl. Matt. Matt, look out for her, will you? Bert, a man's job is one thing, friendship's another. This prairie country is rough and tough and wild at the best. And without the law, nobody could survive in it. And that means putting friendship aside sometimes. But the man still doesn't forget. Yeah, I, I'll look out for her. Thanks, man. I'll see you later. There you Get your prisoner tucked in safely, Matt. <laughs> what about Baudry? He's dead. Absolutely dead. Like I never saw anybody any deader. Blacksmith Hammer makes mighty fine weapon. Yeah. At least for sneaking up behind. I can't figure Bert doing that's not like him. Sometimes a man changes under pressure, Doc. Yeah, I can't figure it either. 
What did you say his chances are? Bad. Straws all point one way. Hmm. Maybe somebody's been messing with the straw stack. Who? That's a good question, man. Huh? Well, the court will ask it. Yeah, if he ever gets there. What do you mean? I just come from Texas Trail a while ago, and some of the boys are kind of riled up. They're talking real loose. No law against talking. Yeah, doubt if they aim to leave it at talking, Matt. They figure the evidence is a little on the weak side. A court might turn Bert loose. So they're saying it's up to them. Yeah, they're just mad because they've lost their source of free drinks. Well, maybe so, but you better keep your eyes open, Matt. Yeah, I know that pack, Doc. They hunt in the dark and pull down stragglers and... Mostly they just talk. So don't worry. Bert's in jail, and that's where he's going to stay. Matt? Matt, are you here? Yeah. I'm here. Wait a minute, I'll light the lamp. What were you doing sitting here in the dark? Yeah, just thinking, wondering. You shouldn't have come here, Jeannie. Matt, I want to see Bert. No visitors after dark. That's a jail rule. Rules don't have to be enforced. Mine do. Bert's a prisoner, same as any other prisoner. He's charged with murder. He didn't do it, Matt. It's not for me to say. But you know he didn't. You know, Bert, you know he wouldn't do a thing like that. Sneak up behind a man's back in the dark. I'm not the court, Jeannie. I know. And they'll believe he did it. Yeah, the night train's coming in. Hope it's not bringing in trouble. The morning train did. Matt, I want to see Bert. I told you that you... Why, you little fool. <laughs> Give me the gun, Jeannie. No, I warn you, Matt. Stay Give back. Give me the gun. No, Matt. So help me, I I'll... said hand it over. <laughs> you knew I wouldn't shoot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what did you hope to gain by that? I don't the... know. Get Bert out. Maybe I don't know. None of this is his fault. Something's got to be done. Matt, you've got to help me. Easy. <laughs> Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? I, I just come from the Texas Trail. I think there's going to be some trouble. Trouble? The bunch that hangs out around there are doing a lot of drinking and talking up the idea of coming over here to the jail. Oh, no. Well, maybe we ought to go over there and do some talking ourselves. Jeannie, I think the best thing for you to do is to go back home and stay there till morning. But, now, don't worry about this. Nothing's going to happen. Oh, but, Matt, you can't handle that crowd alone. I've been handling things alone for a long time. All right, Chester. Those are Jim Nixon's, the one who's been agging them on, Mr. Dillon. Over there at the end of the bar. Yeah, he struck up an acquaintance with Baudry when he first got off the train. Guess he figures he's an old partner by now. Well, come on. Yes, sir. Matt, Matt, wait. Later, Kitty, I got some business with the boys at the bar. That's what I mean. Tulsa Jim's been buying them drinks the last two hours. They're in a real nasty mood. So? So be careful, Matt. That's all. Just be careful. Kitty, I'm the carefulest man you know. Sure, sure. We got the law here in Dodge. Supposedly. But what kind of a law is it that lets a man sneak up behind somebody in the dark and murder him in cold blood? I don't know, Tulsa. Suppose you tell me. No. Dylan. Now, don't let me interrupt you. You were doing fine. Well, this is quite an audience you got. All the panhandlers, bums, and barflies, and dodge. It's quite a collection. Well, calling names won't change the facts, Dylan. What facts? A friend of yours, Bert Wells, had sneaking, cowardly murder. That's for the court to decide, Tulsa. The court. They'll turn them loose. They work hand in glove with you. 
Dylan, we're not going to stand for it. All right, shut up. So you're not going to stand for it, huh? Well, just what are you planning to do? You'll find out in due time, Dylan. Go oh, tend to set him up again all around. Yeah, you've turned into quite a free spender, Tulsa. I never knew you to... Ah, a double eagle gold piece. You mind if I take a look at it? It's good. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Where'd you get it? That's my business, Dylan. So you're the one who killed Baudry. That's a lie. I thought robbing him was just a cover-up, but it wasn't. There aren't many double eagles around Dodge. Baudry had a lot of them. Now you. Why would you get a pocket full of gold pieces, Tulsa? Wells killed Baudry. The blacksmith hammer was lying right beside him. Yes, where you left it. What does she mean? Tulsa Jim came into my husband's shop late this afternoon. His horse had thrown a shoe. He had plenty of chance to steal that hammer. She's lying. Where did you get the gold, Tulsa? I, a liar. I won it. Well, I won it in the poker game. Last week when... Oh, well, when the trail herd would... Tulsa, you're under arrest for murder. Oh. No, you'll never take me! All right, Doc. You better get up an inquest. Confounded match. You, you never give me any chance to practice on live people. Yeah. You wouldn't know what to do with them, Doc. Well, I, I do get fewer complaints this way. Matt. Matt, does this mean that Bert's free? You shouldn't have come here, Jeannie. Yeah, he's free. Chester will go with you over to the jail and let him out. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for everything. You told me one time in Louisville that... Louisville? That was a long time ago and a long way off. So, uh... Goodbye, Jeannie. Goodbye, Matt. What's it all about, Matt? What? <laughs> What's anything all about, kidding? Professor... What do you say? Well, let's have a little tune, huh? Why, sure thing, Mr. Dillon. What'd you like to hear? Oh, uh, how about that one of Foster's, uh, Jeannie. Jeannie with the light brown hair. You bet. You knew her before, didn't you, Matt? Yeah, I met her in Louisville one summer. Saw her quite a lot for a couple of months. And then I drifted out west. A man misses out on things by drifting. I told her then if she ever needed help to to call on me. Well, she called, and you helped her. Yeah, I guess. Well, uh, anyway, uh, that's that. Matt. Yeah. Yeah, Kitty. When are you going to help yourself? Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in our cast were Tom Tully, Lynn Allen, Larry Dobkin, Georgia Ellis, and Barney Phillips. Parley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNear is Doc. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. What are the tunes most people like best? For the answer to that question, listen to Robert Q. Lewis's Waxworks later tonight over most of these same CBS radio stations. Stay tuned now for Broadway is My Beat, which follows immediately over most of these same radio stations. Roy Rowan speaking. On a Sunday afternoon, the music's delightful on the CBS Radio Network.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.